Today I have five fast, fun, easy, and cheap Easter DIYs. They are under $5 each. I'm super excited to share these simple DIYs, but if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. When I say that today's DIYs are stinking simple and easy to do, I mean it. I just got this pack of foam eggs from the Dollar Tree. I think they were meant to be ornaments because they have a little loop on top. All I did was take out that loop and I threaded some jute twine onto the eggs or the eggs onto the jute twine. I used a tapestry needle to kind of push through. Now some of the eggs were a little harder to push through and one of the eggs did break off a little bit. but you really can't tell and as you'll notice there is glitter on these Ugh, i don't like glitter but you can use hairspray or some kind of sealer to just spray over that and that will help keep the glitter to a minimum not as minimum as i'd like i wish they were just like matte eggs but they're not but again this is so simple to make it shouldn't take you any time at all the total for this project was about a dollar. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say like a dollar 30 because I already had the jute twine and the tapestry needle and the eggs were just a dollar 25, but look how pretty they turn out. I'm showing you it on my mantle, but I'm actually going to put it around the top of my tear tray in my bathroom. DIY number two, I am taking these captains inspecting, but I'm taking this pail that I got from Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack for a dollar 25. These carrots I got from Hobby Lobby, they were 40% off $3.99, so that makes them about $2.40. So $2.40 and $1.25, I'm in this DIY for $3.65, not bad. Because it turns out stinking cute and you have leftover material that you could use for something else. Anyways, all I'm doing is hot gluing these carrots around the bucket. That's it. I can't even tell you how easy this is and it takes no time at all. The only time you're spending is gluing. So after you're done gluing, bam, done. And this is how it turned out. So stinking cute and simple to make. Doesn't take hardly any time at all. And you get a really cute thing for your tear tray. Y'all, we are just zippity doo dying through this DIY projects today because I told you they're fast and easy to make. So DIY number three, I am taking this wood round circle that I got from Dollar Tree and it was $1.25 and I am putting, I'm painting it with territorial beige, I think is the color I'm using. And I'm not exactly sure why I chose this color because, well, I'll explain that in a minute. But anyway, I'm painting this wood round with territorial beige. And I'm painting the roof the same color, the roof of this birdhouse. If you can't tell what I'm painting and you can't really tell in this picture, I'm painting a birdhouse and I'm painting the top of it, the roof of it, the same color as the wood base. And then here's where the fun begins. I decide to paint the birdhouse this really pretty blue color. And I should have left it this really pretty blue color, but I'm just showing you, I'm painting it blue. Then I think I'm gonna like the blue color. I mean, it's a pretty blue color. And so I decide to add some moss to the top of this roof. Again, I'm just trying to add color to my tear tray, like the background of my tear tray. So I thought this will add some interest to it. It's a nice, pretty green color. So I'm just hot gluing this moss onto, it's like the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree. So I'm hot gluing reindeer moss onto the top of this birdhouse. Okay, so then I have this candlestick. I spray painted it white, and I'm just gonna hot glue that onto the wood base. Then I thought it would be fun to add some of that same reindeer moss to the base, just kind of in the front. So I'm just hot gluing that down and trying not to burn my fingers. <laughs> And then I start to kind of distress that birdhouse just a bit. And things are going great, y'all. Things are going great so far. And then I'm gonna hot glue the birdhouse to that candlestick to kind of make like a birdhouse on a candlestick on a base. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened in my brain but I decided to paint the birdhouse orange. 
I was kind of going, I think, I don't know what I was going for. Kind of a weathered, you know, painted multiple times look. I am not sure. So I, I'm painting it orange. We're going with the orange right now. And again, I take a sand, a piece of sandpaper and I go in to distress it just a little bit, you know, just kind of add some interest and character to it, I guess. And then I decided to take my chippy brush and add some of that blue paint in. I don't know, I got heavy handed with it in on the front especially. And it just was not, I don't know, it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it y'all. So I tried to lighten up the mood a little bit and add some um, white. Like, to, you know, using my chippy brush, just add some white. And then it just got, I don't know, just got out of control. So then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to paint it white. You know, I just, I'm not feeling the orange. I should have left it blue. I didn't. I could have painted it blue again. But anyway, I just painted it all white and said, that's what we're going to go with. And this is how it turned out. I think it turned out fine. I am going to probably go back and paint it blue just because I really like that blue. But this project cost me $5. I'm not including the cost of the paint, but maybe I should because I use so much paint. But anyways, um, this was going to go on my tear tray, but that base made it a little too tall. So I just have it setting next to my tear tray. All right, moving on to DIY number four. This is a whiskey and wit recreation that I'm gonna be sharing with y'all today. She has this free cut file over on her blog and I'm gonna link the video that she shares this project. I'm gonna link that in my description box below. But all I am doing is I've cut it out using my Cricut and um, I am just weeding it out, weeding out the letters. And next I'm prepping my wine glass with um, some rubbing alcohol. I've already cleaned it, but I'm just using some rubbing alcohol to make sure there's like no oils or residues on there. Now I'm going to transfer the stencil onto the wine glass. And what I should have done and what Whitney told me to do was to cut some slats or like slits in it so that it lays flatter. This is onto a wine glass. This is not onto a flat surface. So it kind of curves and because it curves, things don't lay flat. You see me trying to cut some slits, kind of make it so that the bubbles aren't there as much. I'm trying to push the bubbles out with my hand. And now I'm gonna add some painter's tape because the stencil doesn't cover. I don't want, I don't want any of this etching cream stuff to get anywhere but where I want it to be. And now I wanna show you where, see, you see where it's kind of bubbly up? It's not like flat. You know, I mean, it's not perfect, but it was my first time trying this. And now I'm gonna add the etching cream. So this, I'm applying a generous amount of etching cream and I'm just kind of dabbing it all on. And again, I'm being very generous with my application. So the wine glass cost me $1.25 and the etching cream, I wanna say was like nine or 10 bucks but I didn't use, like, I'm just barely using any. I mean, I'm using a generous amount, but compared to the whole bottle, I don't even think I used a dollar's worth, you know? So I'm gonna say this was 225 for this DIY. But anyway, you apply a generous amount of the etching cream and then the instructions say to wear gloves, <laughs> to do this in a well-ventilated area and near water because this stuff can burn you. But um, I'm being super careful, y'all. And so you let this set for like three minutes. I let mine set for five minutes. I think Whitney did 10. Anyway, you rinse it off under hot water, warm water, and then you remove the vinyl and everything like that. And then this is how it turns out. Now, you, it's hard to see, but it turned out really cute. There are a couple of spots where the etching cream got where I didn't want it to be, but that's because it wasn't smooth and flat, you know? But all in all, turned out super cute, and I can't wait to try some more projects just like this. Y'all, today's video is part of the five under five dollars DIY challenge open playlist. It's hosted by Missy from Crafty Cove DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And today's guest host is Tammy from Happiness Creative. 
I just love partnering and connecting with these ladies. They are awesome crafters. I'm going to have a link to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box below. Please go check it out. It's really an awesome playlist and I just love participating in it because it helps push me to create fun, simple, easy things on a budget. Last DIY for today is DIY number five. I'm taking this charger plate that I got from Dollar Tree. So it's $1.25 and I'm just removing that sticker. I'm using my heat gun and my little scraper tool to get that sticker off. And y'all, these charger plates are not food safe. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it tells you on the back, not dishwasher safe, not food safe, basically just not safe. <laughs> I spray painted it with Rosalium's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Chiffon Cream. Now I'm going to be taking some Mod Podge and applying that to the charger plate in the middle there. And this is really so stinking simple and easy to do. I just, it, it, it turns out so cute. So I'm taking the Vinyl Cling, the bunny, and I'm going to position that in the center of the plate. And these these vinyl clings aren't sticky, you know, in and of themselves necessarily. So you can kind of maneuver this around if you don't really like where it's set or anything like that. And I'm just trying to scrape out the excess Mod Podge and I'm applying a layer of Mod Podge to the top. And then I'm going to go around and add some of the eggs around, you know, towards his feet and on each side of the bunny, just to kind of add some interest in because I had them. I really think this bunny vinyl cling is so beautiful. In fact, I think I'm going to go back today and get another one because I kind of want to do one for my front door. I know I just did the carrot sign for my front door, but I kind of want to do like a wood round with the bunny on it for my front door. I just think it looks so pretty. So all you really do is Mod Podge where you want to put the vinyl cling and then Mod Podge on top. You can kind of squeeze out the excess Mod Podge and then I go back with another layer after this is completely done just to kind of add another layer of Mod Podge. But again, not food safe or anything like that. This turned out really, really cute and I just have it leaning up against near my tiered tray. I just, I love that bunny so much. In fact, I just, like I said, I'm going back to the store today. I'm gonna get another vin uh, vinyl bunny clean. If they have them, they better have them because I just think it looks so beautiful. Thank y'all so much for joining me today as I crafted. I really think my projects turned out so cute. Don't forget, there's gonna be info in the description box below, including a link to my crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. And if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!